Now, for those who don't know, Professor Fieberg, um, I hope he doesn't mind if I call him Marty, um, has, well, thank you, has been involved in domestic violence research, intimate partner violence, domestic violence research, and other related topics for, uh, well, I'm guessing at least 15, 20 years, if not more. Would, would that, that sound about right, Marty? I'd, I'd say about 20 years, yes. Sexuality and Culture, and that's a peer-reviewed paper that you've published. Right, and it was uh, published, um, you know, the online version was published uh, in August, so it's pretty recent. The uh, the hard copy has yet to come out, but it, I think it will in the next issue. And it uh, this bibliography examines, I'm quoting right from it, this bibliography examines 343 scholarly investigations, 270 empirical studies, and 73 reviews and or analyses, which demonstrate that women are as physically aggressive or more aggressive than men in their relationships with their spouses or male partners. The aggregate sample size in the reviewed studies exceeds 440,000 and change. Um, it's an important bibliography, and of course, it is peer reviewed, which means you will be, if you check that bibliography, you can also check every single paper in that bibliography to back up what Professor Fiebert is saying. And this tends to startle people. What do you find is the usual reaction, Marty, when you tell people women are about as violent, maybe even more violent than men in, in, in intimate relationships? What do you find is the typical reaction? Well, it depends on who I'm telling. Now, uh, I think that there's been a growing sophistication among social science researchers, both men and women, that, there, uh, that when you look at the literature, you, you do see... Uh, Agenda parity. Now they can have issues around that, and we'll probably talk about that. The lay public is uh, pretty mystified because I guess the the, the basic uh, information in the culture is that women are, are the victims and, and men are the perpetrators. I did a study a number of years ago where I uh, uh, ex uh, did uh, expose this information to my students. So I, I did a survey before they uh, before I presented information and about. I'd say 30% of them believe in, in uh, uh, you know, equality and in, uh, in gender parity and in, in, uh, intimate partner violence. And then after I presented the data, they uh, most many of them changed their opinion, so it, it got to be about 70 to 80%. So I think that people are um, uh, will change their views as information is presented to them. But I think at this point that. In the general culture, uh, people are, are not very much aware of this. And I've, I've seen a reaction in the academic uh, culture as well. I don't know about in social science journals, but certainly many universities, in my experience, are not teaching this information. No, um, no. They're, they're not, and, and, you know, there are, uh, you know, there's a politics in the university of uh, political correctness and women's studies and and uh, you know people are, are not aware, but then again, uh, there are a significant number of researchers in the field. There are uh, a number of journals, both in uh, in America and uh, and in England, that are uh, bringing this information to the public. So I think things have changed. Uh, you know, when I have um, presented at conferences, maybe uh, twenty fifteen years ago, there'd be um, uh, kind of a strong a negative reaction to what I was saying, uh, not quite heckling, but close to it. Now it's um, it's accepted more or less uh, as, a, as a, a, a factual uh, area, and but people will disagree. For example, they might disagree how who's seriously injured, who's initiating the um, um, uh, aggression. You know, those sort of issues are, are worth talking about. Um, I'm very impressed with the work of, of John Hamill, um, who's uh, you know organized this journal, Partner Abuse, and he's uh, uh, written uh, a, a, a gender inclusive uh, approach to uh, uh, partner violence. And I think he's had a, uh, a significant effect, uh, not only in terms of the research, but also in terms of the social milieu, at least in California. John Hamill? Yeah. My name is John Hamill? 
Yeah. H A M E L. And what's the name of his journal again? Partner Abuse. Partner Abuse is the name of the journal. Is it also a peer reviewed journal? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, very much so. And, um, you know, uh, I um, just uh, John Hamill, uh, Gender Inclusive Treatment of Intimate Partner Abuse is, is the book he published in um, 2005. And um, he, um, you know, he not only looked at the research, but he also has like a treatment program for both men and women who are involved in intimate partner violence. Um, I mentioned John Hamill. You know, there was this um, um, series of research projects that he organized for this journal, Partner Abuse. And um, I'm very impressed with that. Um, mm -hmm. There was a, um, a, a paper called Prevalence of Physical Violence in Intimate Relations, Rates of Male and Female Victimizations, and then a uh, second paper on rates of male and female perpetrations. And it was um, um, the first author is Sarah uh, Des Demare, Demare. And uh, it's uh, five authors. I'm, I'm the fifth author in the project. And what they did is they looked at every study from the year 2000 to 2010 that was ever published in any journal worldwide. And they uh, um, come to, came to the conclusion that there's essentially gender parity both in victimization and perpetration. And, um, uh, you know, and, and I think that um, there's a link to this that uh, uh, Dean and I talked about earlier, and I think that people who are interested in the facts should uh, connect into that and, and uh, that's a, a very um, uh, important and you know powerful set of evidence that yeah be I'll, give, I'll give that to everybody now and I'll put it in the chat room and there's actually three different websites that contain the identical information but probably the easiest one to remember is domesticviolencefacts.org just one word, domesticviolencefacts.org. Well, well I, I remember in the early days um, when uh, Richard Gellers and Murray Strauss and Susan Steinmetz, she actually stopped. That's she true. In, that in, 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 the, in the 70s and 80s when they first started presenting their data, they, they really uh, were... Uh, they were really threatened. And even not, not that long ago when I was with Senator Ann Cool. When we got to Vancouver, there was a phone call apparently from one of the radical groups saying they were going to bomb where we were speaking. And so the whole place was crawling with police. It's not one's most comfortable feeling. You feel very vulnerable. I was regularly picketed and threatened and phone calls would come in. We have some data from some studies, some FBI studies that show that it's it's about a 60-40 ratio of a uh, number of men killed versus number of women. So it's not quite parity there, but it's, um, you know, there's a significant number of men who are killed by, by women in intimate relationships. So wait a minute. I'm going to stop you right there for a sec because you just said 60-40, which is yeah. not quite parity. What I keep having thrown at me, I don't know, well, at least one person referenced uh, – uh, U.S. CDC thing, but claimed men were four to five times as likely to murder their wives or girlfriends as vice versa. Are you saying yeah. that it's real, that that four to four, that, that that's, that's not well, realistic? You know, it, it, it's, uh, it depends on what data set you're looking at. I'm looking at a data set that was collected by the FBI, and uh, I think it's uh, uh, you know, over a 10-year period from 1980 to 1990, uh, th that shows that um, it's, a, a, as I said, about a 60-40 split. Um, Warren Farrell, who uh, has, has written about, uh, uh, you know, partner violence, says that women are more likely to uh, go undetected in their um, uh, murder uh, of their spouses because they are more likely to hire. Um, that's absolutely killers. true. Yeah, that's absolutely true. 
in my experience. And, and, and to poison their partners and, and, and uh, be able to get away with it. So he's close to thinking that it's a 50-50 um, split. Um, so, it, you know, those are some of the, uh, the issues involved there. Now, when it comes to injuries, I think that the John Archer study that was published in Psych Bulletin, which is the most respected journal in, in um, the field of psychology, again, also comes at, uh, in terms of injuries, it's, it's about a 60-40, that uh, serious injuries, that, that men are seriously injured 40% of the time in, um, in certain cases and women are injured 60% of the time. Murray Strauss has been looking at this for many years. Um, uh, initially said it was a 4 to 1 um, ratio of serious injuries of men, uh, of women to men, but has come around more recently to look at it as closer to 2 to 1. And I have looked at a number of studies that show that it's pretty equal. Men are less likely to, to um, go to emergency rooms with the same injuries that women will go to emergency rooms with. So I think that, um, uh, you know, it's, uh, those are the kind of arguments you can present to people who are dismissing it as, as you say, 10 to 1 or issues like that, because there are some uh, empirical studies that show that it's um, uh, me... close, close at the parity. No, I, I, I think overall... I think programs like this, and particularly with Marty's help and, uh, and the people who are now willing to come and talk openly, I just, for me, it's kind of a miracle because I remember these sort of conversations you sort of had quietly in the background because you didn't want anybody to hear in case they either picketed you or you had midnight phone calls threatening you. And thank God the climate's changed and it's becoming so much more positive. That's what I'd like to say.